Good happy Monday evening, January 24, 2022. I'm Riley King, and welcome to this Monday evening edition of the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this Monday evening, so let's get started right now. First step timeline narrowed down of when Harmony Montgomery last seen. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Are you looking for a rewarding career with purpose? Join our dynamic team that's dedicated to making a difference. Bring your talent to Riverbend Community Mental Health. Specialized behavioral health by providers who truly care. Well, the Attorney General's office released a timeline this afternoon narrowing down Harmony's disappearance to just a couple of weeks in late 2019. Now, according to the AG's office, Harmony's father, Adam Montgomery, and his wife, Kayla, they were evicted from their home on Guilford Street in Manchester on November 27th of 2019. Witnesses reported seeing Harmony and their two other children at that time. Now, officials say by December 6th through the 10th of 2019, Adam and Kayla were only spotted with their two common children. Harmony was no longer with them. At that point, the Montgomerys were homeless and living out of cars, possibly in the north end of Manchester. Investigators believe Harmony disappeared sometime between November 28th and December 10th of 2019. Now, Kayla Montgomery, Harmony's stepmother, she appeared in court Monday morning and pleaded not guilty to charges of theft by deception and welfare fraud for allegedly collecting food stamps intended for Harmony during the time the child was missing. In court, prosecutors allege that Kayla knows something about where Harmony is and asked she be considered a flight risk. However, the judge dismissed that and said she could be released on personal recognizance bail if she completes a, re a rehabilitation program in Nashua. The chief of Manchester police, Alan Aldenberg, says their mission remains the same. I'm a little discouraged, to be honest with you, right? Um, but that's not going to stop what we're doing. Um, you know, I met with the detectives again this morning, and again, and nobody's hanging their head. Nobody's... Uh, you know, kicking the can down the road. They're committed to what we're, we're trying to accomplish here um, and to locate Harmony. And meanwhile, Harmony's father, Adam Montgomery, he remains behind bars for allegedly hitting the child in the face and also endangering Harmony by interfering with custody. We're live in Manchester tonight. Scott Cook, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Ten more people die of COVID-19 in New Hampshire as active cases drop. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. So on to the pandemic now. Active infections of COVID-19 dropping to 15,000 tonight. This is the lowest since January the 6th. There are nearly 7,900 new cases to report, with nearly 6,200 from the weekend and over 1,000 from a backlog. Current hospitalizations down now to 411. There are 10 new deaths to report. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. New Hampshire schools hold vaccination clinics as COVID-19 surge continues. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. More people should be a comfort keeper because the world really works and is based off just helping, you know, and giving. If more people would really help and give, like they say, the world would really be a better place, you know, and it's, it feels good to help and give. The whole thing is rewarding. Working there and knowing that I'm keeping people happy and healthy and safe. COVID-19 
COVID-19 continues to impact some schools in the state. Woodsville Elementary is closed through Wednesday due to 30 active cases, which make up more than 10% of the students in the school. Superintendent Lori Melanson says, I am hopeful that the three days of school closure will provide time for some of our positive cases to clear and allow for deep cleaning. We are providing student meals during these three days for pickup at the school. Melanson says the Haverhill Cooperative School Board will review COVID response plans this week. Some districts are working through the new isolation and quarantine guidelines and trying to help kids by getting them up to date on vaccinations. Bedford is partnering with Rite Aid to host the vaccination clinic at the high school on February 2nd. It's intended for 12 to 15 year olds eligible for the Pfizer booster. We just want to make sure that people have access and opportunity to it. Uh, it is completely voluntary. Um, and not required, but we just want to make sure we're in a position to give people that opportunity if they want it. The Concord School District has two upcoming clinics. The first is this Saturday at Abbott Downing Elementary School. It's intended for 5 to 17-year-olds, but the public and those over 18 are also welcome. It was really important for us to use every measure possible um, to keep our schools open, to have our youngsters in school every day, and also to protect our teachers. Now, the Bedford and Concord school districts are also providing symptomatic testing for students. Bedford can test in all five of its schools, while Concord has a drive through site for families. Live in the newsroom, Jason King, WMUR News 9. Okay, there you go on that video and that report. FDA halts use of antibody drugs unlikely to work against Omicron. Let's take a listen to this video. The floor model clearance sale is here. Mainly Tubbs is discounting all remaining floor model hot tubs and saunas. Receive Throughout the course of the pandemic, monoclonal antibodies have been a saving grace for both patients and providers. But as WVTM13's Chip Scarborough explains, a potentially life-saving tool is apparently no match for the Omicron variant. While the surge in COVID-19 patients has at times been too much for some hospitals to handle, the use of monoclonal antibodies has often kept the problem from going from bad to worse. Estimates are we prevented 70 to 85 percent of, of hospitalizations by giving those uh, monoclonal antibody infusions uh, within five days of onset of symptoms. But while monoclonal antibodies have helped patients fight off the Delta variant and other variants throughout the pandemic, the same can't be said for Omicron. The monoclonal antibodies that we've been using from Regeneron and from Lilly do not work against Omicron. That's a fact. Dr. Michael Sag says another form of monoclonal antibodies is being lined up for distribution to Alabama. It's called sotrofimab. For the time being, though, we're in this really awkward window where we might not have as much access to sotrofimab. The Alabama Department of Public Health sent me a statement about the use of monoclonal antibodies in our state, saying Health and Human Services is recommending providers continue treating patients with the antibody therapies already being used. However, reserving sotrofimab for patients who test positive for Omicron or for those who are in an area where the presence of Omicron is greater than 20%. We've requested it for UAB, but even if we do get it, we are um, getting it with an allocation that the federal government is determining. So if we have a very big wave, um, not only is it going to be challenging to have enough of it, it also requires a lot of people to give that monoclonal antibody in a clinic. Doctors stressing the issue with the monoclonal antibody therapy is especially troubling for those who are unvaccinated. In Birmingham, Chip Scarborough, WVTM 13. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Man accused of firing gun at car behind him in Lebanon, police say. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. 
Well, Jen, in the arraignment this afternoon, Donald Delisle pleaded not guilty to the charges. The judge ordered he be held without bail and that he have no contact to the alleged victims. Delisle is accused of shooting a gun at a car behind him while driving into Lebanon on Meriden Road. Police say the car tried to pass in an illegal passing zone when Delisle shot out the back window of his own SUV. When police put him in handcuffs, he said the people following him were trying to kill him, tried to poison him, and that his ex-girlfriend poisoned him for years. The state did acknowledge a mental health issue. Lebanon police say it's an extreme case of road rage they haven't seen the likes of for years. Road rage, unfortunately, is, is a very common call that we respond to. And every now and then we will get um, a threatening, either with a knife or a firearm or some sort of weapon. But uh, nothing in recent past that we had an incident where an actual firearm has been discharged at another person. Luckily, no one was hurt in this incident. Delisle is currently being held in preventative detention. Live in Lebanon, Grace Feinerman, WMUR News. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that is a look at your news for this evening. Now, let's take a look at your weather. And weather right now is cloudy, 21 degrees. Snow possible after 10 p.m. this evening. With a full weather forecast, let's go to meteorologist Jacqueline Thomas. Good evening, Jacqueline. To be a part of the team at Caesar Chimney Service, the only prerequisite is to be just a little bit crazy. We can train you to do everything that we do. Thanks for watching. I'm meteorologist Jacqueline Thomas. Of course, heading through the weekend, we had some cold temperatures to deal with. And now as we head through this week, the cold does come back, but we're also tracking a chance for some snow, starting with tonight into Tuesday. Light snow is expected before that cold returns. And then all eyes will be on a system approaching as we head towards the weekend. Through the night tonight, low temperatures fall back into the single digits north teens, most elsewhere near the low 20s in southern parts of the state that snow arrives late tonight and continues overnight into Tuesday morning. So the 12 hour forecast through the overnight period, light snow showers coming down and it may let up at times and then come down a bit steadier at other times. It likely won't stay persistently steady the entire night. So it is going to be light and it's a light fluffy type of snow as we head through the morning. So that's what to expect. Now this is going to continue until about six, seven, and 8 o'clock before starting to taper off and become a bit more scattered and isolated. And then after the snow ends, we actually see our temperatures start to climb as we head towards the afternoon. So potential impacts with this heavy snow, very low. We're talking light snow with this, but it is going to be enough to create some slick travel in a few spots. So low travel concerns and then not really expecting anything as far as gusty winds or coastal impacts with this weak system. Satellite and radar has been showing the snow approaching from the south and west and that's what's going to move through during the overnight period. So on Tuesday temperatures do rebound into the upper 20s north and 30s for most of the state so it will be a milder afternoon and we do break into some sunshine before the day ends once all that snow winds down in the morning hours. So the morning is when you'll see the potential for those impacts. Here's what this all looks like. Through Monday night into Tuesday morning snow showers coming down it's a bit broken up and scattered as we head through the morning hours on Tuesday by 10 11 12 o'clock this is starting to wind down and there will be just a lingering isolated snow shower I do expect the mountains to hold on to some lingering snow showers longer into the day before we really clear out as we head through Tuesday evening and Tuesday night and then as we head into Wednesday we're looking at some sunshine returning. So what are we talking about for totals? Well, pretty minimal amounts, nothing crazy for snowfall, certainly by New Hampshire standards. This is a pretty uh, low impact type of event, but it's still gonna be enough to create a nuisance and even one or two inches of snow will be enough to create some slick spots. So a dusting to two inches for most places expected. And as you head north of the lakes region, that's where you could see two or three, especially those higher elevations where you see a couple of lingering snow 
showers. Then behind this system, Wednesday, we get back into the sun, but we also get back into the cold. Wednesday's high temperatures will be similar to tonight's low temperatures. So highs Wednesday struggle to get out of the single digits north and struggle to get out of the teens elsewhere across the state. And then by Wednesday night into Thursday, we're actually talking about lows below zero across the area once again. Then the end of the week. This is going to be something we're keeping an eye on through these next several days. Looks like a front comes through Friday, could trigger the chance for a few light snow showers. But then it's the weekend as we head into Saturday that this potential system could impact us. Now, what those impacts will be is still what's up in the air because the track of this is going to uh, have a big factor to play in that. So we'll keep an eye on how this tracks through the week, but there is the potential for some significant snowfall accumulation if this track is close enough to favor that outcome. Otherwise, we could be looking at, you know, some coastal impacts with this, the potential for gusty winds, too. So those are all things that we'll be keeping an eye on this week. You want to make sure you're staying tuned in the coming days for those updates as we get closer to the weekend. Otherwise, seven-day forecast taking us through the week ahead. We do get that sunshine through the middle of the week, but we also get that cold cold for those temperatures below zero again Thursday morning at least we get the sun and then tracking that next potential system for the weekend okay and there you go on that weather forecast from meteorologist Hilly from meteorologist Jacqueline Thomas thank you for that weather report Jacqueline and we are going to switch gears now and let's go into um Sports. And here is WMUR News 9 Sports with Jonathan Marshall. Good evening, Jonathan. since the start of the new year, having won 10 of their last 12, including Saturday's 3-2 W. Oh, the Winnipeg Jets. Oh, home against the just Anaheim Ducks at 7. Head coach Bruce Trump. Cassidy says he has noticed a change with his team. First skate. I think we have played a little more aggressive. We're skating better. Our pace is better. Some of that has to do with execution. When you make plays, you're going to look faster. And some of that, you know, like I said, is just being ready to go and feeling good about your game. And right now we are. Um, when the uh, tough times come or a game like Carolina, then, then you know, we got to make sure we revisit what we didn't do well, but not dwell on it. The Celtics went over the Wizards Sunday as possibly one of those games that can start getting things in the right direction, especially for Jason Tatum. He went off for 51 points, going 9 of 14 from 3. This was, more, this was major for Tatum, who entered the game having missed 20 straight three-point attempts. Tatum says Marcus Smart, who made his returns to the court, was a calming influence. You know, he told me not to worry about the 23s in a row that I missed. Um, and just to keep shooting. Uh, you know, they need me to be myself. Um, and it's really going to fall. You know, I know, obviously, things haven't been going our way, but, you know, we just have to go out there and do what we, what we know we ought to do. You know, poor Jason Jalen told him certainly about himself, and I went down along with everybody on the team individually. You know, told him, you know, I appreciate him, proud of him. You know, this is what you do. Just go out there and do it and keep doing it. After a great divisional round weekend, four teams remain with hopes of making it to Super Bowl 56 in L.A. On February 13th, the Bengals will visit the Chiefs Sunday at 3, followed by the All-Cali matchup with the 49ers at the Rams at 6.30. Boys High School Hockey, Nashville South and Pelham facing off against Merrimack. Merrimack had it going early in this one. The first shot is off, but Owen Miner is at the right place at the right time for the goal. one nothing Tomahawks. Another missed shot from Merrimack. No worries. Braden Kuglami with a nice pass. For a second goal for a two-goal lead. And the third goal, a Ryan, a good for the goal. 2 nothing. Merrimack. Merrimack goes on to win this one. Six to nothing. Shout out to Salhegan senior Chloe Trudell. She was named the Gatorade New Hampshire Girls Cross Country Player of the Year. That's a first for the school. Trudell led the Sabres to second place at the Gates Championship and won the individual title at the time of 1905-50. She's a good one. Wow, good job. All right, John. Thanks Thank so you. much. Well, be sure to tune in. 
Okay, and there you go. That was Sports from WMUR News 9, Jonathan Marshall. Thank you for that, Jonathan. And that does it for this evening edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. Thank you for tuning in and watching. Have a great evening, and see you back here tomorrow for another newscast. Good night and goodbye, everyone.